Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide to Sephiroth Extreme, the newest Extreme Primal in Patch 3.2. To enter this fight, you must complete the quest When the Bow Wakes, from the Rising Stones in Mordona, which requires the 3.1 story to accept. Immediately accept the next quest after defeating Sephiroth Normal Mode and handing that quest in. Then, just grab 7 friends and a minimum item level of 205, and you're good to go. This fight drops I-220 weapons for every job, as well as a new mount and a few crafting materials. This fight is broken up into three phases. If you'd like to skip to a specific phase, please use the annotations in the top left hand of the video. If you're looking for a general ability rotation and diagrams that are used in the guide, please see the description for a Google Doc. Phase 1 begins when you engage Sephiroth, and has him rotating between two big mechanics until he hits 65%. Keep him positioned in the center of the room unless you are moving him for mechanic number one, which we'll explain in a few seconds. At the start of the fight, he'll do a cleave, two room-wide AoEs, another cleave, and then go into his first mechanic. For mechanic number one, Sephiroth will summon four orbs in the form of a triangle. These orbs drop into the ground and then create rapidly expanding AoEs that deal damage and inflict vulnerability up if you get hit by them. If you haven't figured out how this game works by now, don't stand in them. After another raid-wide AoE, he will mark one healer and one DPS with a giant marker that designates that the next attack will deal its damage split between all players. Basically, we stack four DPS in one group, and then stack the two healers and the off-tank in another group, and just mitigate slash heal the damage. To figure out where we are running, we just go under the base of the triangle formation with the balls. You can see it in the diagram here. The main tank also stays out of the stacks, since each jump will give vulnerability up. You don't want him getting the physical vuln up, lest he get auto-attacked for like over 10k damage. After the second split damage marker stacks hit, quickly reposition Sephiroth to the center of the room. He'll do two room-wide AoEs, followed by a super tank buster, designated by him winding up one of his fists. Mitigate this with cooldowns, and be ready for him to follow up with another cleave plus an auto-attack. After this, he will go into mechanic number 2. Mechanic number 2 has him summon a single expanding ball AoE, and another room-wide AoE while that's dropping. Everyone should stack up near the ball without touching its AoE like seen here. Sephiroth will then place 5 green AoEs and a single purple AoE on members of the raid. These AoEs just do damage, so make sure no two people are overlapping. There are plenty of ways to spread out for this mechanic, a few of them shown on the screen right now, but really, just make sure that you're spread out without overlapping and be behind Sephiroth. After he places the AoE, he will begin charging up a 180 degree cone in a random raid member's direction, which is why you all stack together to bait it towards that expanding AoE. This cone might be 180 degrees, but its origin point is slightly behind the center of Sephiroth's hitbox, so try not to be directly on his flanks. You're not safe. Heal up after the AoEs explode. You'll do two more big AoEs, another big tank buster, plus cleave, and then he'll repeat mechanics 1 and 2 until he hits 65%. At 65%, Sephiroth will go into his add phase. He'll start charging his Limit Break Bar, which, if it hits 100, it's lights out for you. You can see it over on the duty list. Now, there are two types of adds in this phase. You'll have to fight two Kachnas and 12 Binas. Assign a tank to each of them, and ensure that they stick to their add type. Kachnas have a tank buster they use every 10 to 15 seconds or so that inflicts magic vulnerability on its target tank. All of the Kachna's damage is physical, so this doesn't make that tank take more damage. However, the Bina's attacks all do magic damage, so if a Kachna tank gets hit by a Bina, they're gonna feel the pain. Also, whenever any of the adds die, they explode. Bina's explode for 2k damage to the raid, while Kachna's explode for 10k damage. At the start of this phase, three Bina's and one Kachna will spawn. The Binas spawn in groups of 3 every 20 seconds or so in the positions shown on the screen in this diagram, while Kachina number 2 will spawn around the same time as Bina set number 3, or as soon as you kill Kachina number 1. For kill order, you can kill Binas number 1 through 6, then Kachina number 1, then Binas number 7 through 12, then Kachina number 2. 
We actually did it the opposite way, so either way works, but I think this should be a lot more manageable to kill the Beena's first. Just remember to watch the Beena's tank health when the Kachina dies. In general, try to keep everyone's health at pretty high values, especially when a Kachina is about to die. After killing all of the adds, Sephiroth will use his ultimate attack before beginning his final phase. Sephiroth's final phase will consist of him performing a set pattern of attacks twice in a row before enraging. He doesn't auto-attack in this phase, but there are plenty of things for the tanks and healers to do. At the start of the phase, right after he becomes targetable, you'll notice the ground turns green and there's going to be a bunch of cracks, before stone pillars erupt under everyone. These stone pillars do damage in an AoE and also inflict determination down. These pillars can actually be dodged though, by moving away from where you were standing as soon as the ground flashes green. So we stack up and move as soon as we see the ground flash, like you see us doing here. After that, he will begin his first set of mechanics. Sephiroth will place Force against Might and Force against Magic on four raid members each. Each of these debuffs are used to counter the next several mechanics of the fight. The first mechanic to counter is his Spirit Attack. Each hand will have a different color orb, and you just have to make sure you get smacked by the same color orb as the debuff you have. Follow the guideline on the screen to see which one you should be standing in when you have which debuff. After that, there will be two giant tower AoEs. You just need one person in each of them, and each of these people need to have Force Against Might. If they don't have it, you will die. Then, several green orb AoEs will begin expanding. You just need to avoid these just like in any other phase. There's no countering them otherwise. Now at this point, all players with Force Against Magic should be stacking up right in front of Sephiroth's belly and ensure to grab the four tethers off the rest of the raid. Players with Force Against Magic won't take much damage from these tethers attacks. After that, you'll have two more giant tower AoEs and you need to use Force Against Might on them, followed by one final set of orb AoEs to match the colors with. After this, Force Against Might and Magic are going to wear off. The very next mechanic is Earthshakers. This will mark one DPS and one healer with an Earthshaker. This does damage based on distance, so these two players should go to the designated markers on this diagram. Everyone else can stack in the middle between the two Earthshakers, and when the ground turns green, move to avoid the stone pillar AoEs. The marked player can run forward after the Shakers to avoid the pillars as well. Now real quick, I'd just like to explain that while we have this setup for our raid in this video, there are plenty of other setups that work, as long as you create enough distance between you and Sephiroth. I definitely recommend experimenting with some other ones, such as this one, which I've also seen work. It's a little squeezed in over on the right, but no more or less squeezed in than you would be if you tried to squeeze in between the two Earthshakers. Either way, either of these will work, so just experiment with the distances and you should be okay. His next attack is Da'at, and this attack will target the main tank plus three random raid members with a massive AoE. Make sure to stay spread out during this attack. The tank will get hit hard first, followed by three random players, so just ensure to heal them up. Now you'll start seeing Mega Flare Circles plus debuff AoEs, but you won't have Force Against Might or Magic anymore. Tanks can eat a tower circle, and then you can just stack up and heal the AoE damage from the orb. It doesn't matter which one you're standing in, since you don't have force against minor magic. Now this next part is probably the part most people mess up on. Sephiroth will start summoning green AoE orbs, again, while you have to avoid falling off the edge from his knockbacks. The first blue circle is to the north, so stack inside of it. When the green ground AoE flashes, move out to avoid stone pillars, but still stay very close to the blue circle. Get knocked back in the south-southeast direction towards the C marker. The next blue circle is on the west side, so squeeze in between the two expanding AoEs and get knocked back to the east. The final circle is to the east, so you want to get knocked back towards B, which is like southwest-west kind of. Here's a quick diagram showing you exactly the movements that we use in order to do this fight. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get this down, you should be able to safely do it. I've also seen in some videos, other groups will just say, you know, forget it, and just use a tank LB3 here so they can ignore the stone pillars. It's a viable strategy, but eventually with gear and with proper positioning, you can instead save that LB3 for either healer or for DPS, so I'd consider this a little bit more optimal. 
After the final knockback, you're going to get two more Earthshakers before another set of Da'ats. During the Da'ats, you're going to have to deal with Stone Pillars again, so remember, just move when the ground turns green and you won't get hit by them. He'll then do the Tower Circles again, which your tanks just have to absorb, followed by the Raid AoE of the Orbs again. After this, he will enter his final set of mechanics for the cycle. Everyone's going to want to get close to his face and prepare to get knocked back after that last set of AoEs. There will be a storm of words after he knocks you back in the back of the room, and four Binaz, two on each side in the northeast and northwest sides. Each tank should pick up two Binaz each while all the DPS focus on the storm of words. It pretty much just needs to die before it finishes casting Revelation, or it's a wipe. Now after that, the boss is going to do a few mechanics back to back to back. He's going to do a raid AoE, followed by tank circle AoEs and a set of stone pillars, He's going to do another raid AoE, and then there's going to be a little short delay before he does a third raid AoE. During that delay, you'll want to kill the Binos, which again are exploding for about 2000 damage each. After the last raid wide AoE, everyone can hover around the AoE circle left behind by the Storm of Words, and stand in it to get knocked above the swipe. At this point, Sephiroth will repeat all of these mechanics again in the exact same order. After the second swipe, he will enrage and then just swipe the party off the edge. Avoiding the stone pillar's determination down and keeping people alive is top priority to meet the DPS checks in I-210 gear. With some crafted gear or Alexander normal gear, these DPS checks should be severely overgeared. Just keep in mind that it's going to be rough learning this process for the first time, so be a little bit lenient on your friends, please. And that's a wrap for Sephiroth Extreme. Thank you for watching this video guide. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for all the latest news, information, and guides for Patch 3.2. Also, be sure to check out my live stream if you want to check out some Final Fantasy XIV and other games as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be on the lookout, and until then, take care.